Hi, Mark Donovan here, and today I'm going to go over the topic of WAS, what it is, how it works, and why it's beneficial to pilots and aircrafts and the general public. But before I get into it, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel so you get notified of my next video. Okay, let's get into it. What is WAS? Uh, WAS stands, first of all, for Wide Area Augmentation System. Uh, WAS is an FAA system for civilian aircraft operating in the National Airspace uh, System of the United States in North America. Um, it augments the accuracy of the GPS satellite system for civil aviation. It covers virtually all of North America, as you can see in this map here on to the right. Um, it improves uh, the position accuracy to within less than one meter. And that, as a result, opens a lot of opportunities uh, for this technology. So aircraft equipped with WAS, uh, localized performance vertical guidance or LPV uh, type functionality in its, uh, in its avionics, can access over 4,000 runway ends in poor weather conditions and fly to minimums as low as 200 feet. In addition to WAS that's enabled in North America, there's also other interoperable space-based augmentation systems, um, such as in Europe and in Japan, known as EGNOS and MTSAT. But first, before we go any further into WAS, we better understand GPS a little bit better. So the GPS system is comprised of a network of 31 orbital satellites that circle the Earth. Each satellite is basically a radio with a highly accurate clock on board. Each satellite follows a different orbital path that are set up such that a certain number of satellites can be observed anywhere on the Earth. Uh, these orbital satellites uh, orbit around 12,500 miles above the Earth and complete an orbit approximately every 12 hours. They are in a constant motion relative to a fixed position on the ground or in an aircraft. The orbiting GPS satellites transmit a signal down to the ground in all directions. Aircraft equipped with GPS receivers on board can pick up these satellite signals and can calculate a precise fix of their position up to within a few meters of accuracy. As long as the aircraft's GPS receiver can pick up enough of those satellites, four satellites are needed, the onboard GPS receiver can compute a position of the aircraft. But GPS satellites can have some errors in the signals that they transmit out, and aircraft traveling fast over the ground can also lead to position errors. Some of these GPS transmission signal errors are associated with ionosphere uh, disturbances uh, timing, and satellite orbit errors. Now move further into WAS and how it augments the GPS service. Um, in addition to the 31 orbital satellites that travel around the planet, there's also some geostationary satellites. These geostationary satellites um, fly at an altitude of about three times the height of the orbiting satellites, and are, as the name suggests, geostationary. They're kind of fixed to rotate above the Earth in one position, and they orbit them somewhere around the equator of, of the Earth. Uh, they fly at a slower speed, and again, because of that, they, they try to control that speed so they're synchronous with the Earth's rotational speed, and thus remain in that fixed position on the ground over the equator. Go a little bit further, there's also ground-based wide area reference stations associated with WAS. There's 38 of them spread out all over North America. They observe or they, they're surveyed to an exact latitude and longitude and position and elevation above sea level. So these particular uh, ground-based GPS receivers, if you will, um, receive the same um, information that an aircraft might or any other type of vehicle that has a GPS receiver on it. Um, so they receive this GPS orbiting satellite information and compare that GPS position information that they calculate, these ground-based stations, uh, with their known lat longitude and elevation. And from that, they can determine if the GPS is effectively uh, producing any types of signal errors. So if the error is associated with one of the orbital satellites is not working correctly, the ground-based station can choose to ignore that satellite and use information from another set of orbital satellite, satellites in its place. And as a result of that, um, that works toward getting us toward that much more precise position information. So WAS works similar to RAIM, um, but unlike um, RAIM, WAS is done continuously, every second. So each ground-based station will transmit, transmit its position errors that it has detected with correction coefficients 
uh, by terrestrial links to master stations. There are three master stations in the GPS WAS system. These master stations collect all of the error message, messages received and generate a user message. That user message is a set of instructions for GPS receivers, such as the one on board an aircraft, uh, on how to handle the errors detected uh, in the GPS system. This user message is transmitted up to the geostationary satellites above the equator, uh, and again, they do this every second. And then the geostationary satellites transmit this user information to the orbiting satellites, and then eventually that gets to our aircraft, uh, or I should say our aircraft that has WAS-enabled GPS on board, and it will interpret those user messages and use that, um, those coded messages to augment um, its position information uh, for that avionics receiver in the aircraft. And as a result, it produces a much more precise position. Again, with non-WAS equipped GPS receivers, just basic GPS, accuracy can be expected to be about uh, within a few meters. But with a WAS equipped GPS receiver, uh, accuracy can be, can be detected again to within less than a meter. So what are the benefits of WAS? Well, with the higher accuracy, position accuracy associated with WAS uh, and WAS enabled GPS receivers, this allows aircraft to utilize GPS LPV instrument approach procedures that have lower minimums than LNAV. These LPVs can go down to as low as 200 feet, um, making them very uh, similar to an ILS precision approach. And you can see here on the right in this picture here, we have uh, an LPV with a decision altitude of 978 feet MSL on this case, so 433 feet height above the runway. Um, so WAS enabled GPS systems can very much mimic a uh, precision approach of an ILS. So the next question is, is my GPS receiver WAS enabled in my aircraft? Well, you need to check your GPS avionics airplane flight manual and flight supplement manual to see if it's WAS enabled certified. Um, there's two types of certification. There's a TSO C145 or C146. Um, this basically determines if it can be used as a standalone navigator or a piece of WAS enabled equipment um, that can be used for flying these types of LPV approaches. So for part 91 ops, TSO's um, C145 or 146 is um, acceptable for standalone navigation. Uh, the TSO uh, C145 is associated with airborne navigation sensors used in GPS. So you typically find this type of functionality in an FMS box associated with a large uh, aircraft like an airliner. Uh, but for smaller air, GA aircraft, uh, typically you'll see a TSO C146 type certified GPS WAS piece of equipment uh, that allows it to be used as a complete navigation system uh, for flying approaches. So again, with um, the appropriate TSO, TSO C145-146 certification, pilots can fly that LP, LPV, LNAV, LNAV, VNAV approaches um, because they have the GPS WAS enabled receivers on board. Uh, and lastly, Garmin's GTN 650, uh, which we use in the aircraft that I fly with a lot, are TSO C146 certified. So this is a GPS GTN 650 from Garmin. If we want to take a look at our GPS satellite situation and determine if we're WAS enabled, we can go to GPS satellites and you'll see that we've got uh, differential or Ds showing up in all of these bars here. These are satellites and the Ds tells us they're getting differential or error correction code information uh, associated with WAS. So we know this is a WAS enabled receiver uh, by the fact that we see, we're seeing Ds. And thus we can fly uh, approaches like an LPV uh, that has lower minimums. So that's a summary of what WAS is and how it works. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel so you get notified when I come out with my next video.